Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. So I've started modelling a PlayStation 5 controller. Um, someone asked me in one of the co in the comments on one of my videos if I'd thought of modelling one of these, and I hadn't. But after looking at one, I thought that looks like a really good challenge and something I'd probably enjoy doing, and I'd probably get something out of it. So uh, this is where I'm at so far. So I'm going to put together a few videos on this. So this is the majority of the white. I've got a black and white controller here as a reference. Um, so this is the majority of the white surfaces are uh, finished. I've just got to um, tidy up the end of the handles down here. So today I spent quite a bit of time working on this front blend, which runs from uh, quite tight, like 0.5 around here, and, and opens up next to the front buttons. So that was quite a challenge. A uh, few little glitches in there still. Just that surface there, I'm, I'm still can quite get this uh, running quite nicely through here. But overall it's looking okay. Fairly happy with it, considering there's quite a lot going on. Formally, there's quite a lot going on. Like, these sort of subtle details around here. And then the surface being like an extrude, and then that extrude um, tucks down and then runs up. Yeah, lots of subtlety to this form. So it took me quite a while just to uh, sort of get my head around the form after getting a scan. I got a scan. Okay, so I got an STL from Printables from the user Kabliga. Um, so I downloaded that and the scan was uh, good enough for me to use to sort of figure out the volumes of the surfaces. And then I've also got a physical model to... Um, evaluate as well because the scan uh some of the sharp crease some of the sharp edges and stuff uh have been eroded so as you can see but yeah generally pretty good for the volumes so i haven't modeled exactly to the scan because the scan's like asymmetric there's some differences there so i don't know what his tolerance was on his scanner but um anyway i'm not trying to make an exact replica yeah but once you start getting modeling something like this and you have the product in hand you really notice some of the subtle form decisions that have been made along the way. Like, it's quite hard to tell, but this area here where the D-pads go has a lot of um, flattening, like the curvature in the handle here. It's quite curved, and then it comes up here into this D-pad area. It gets really flat. Like, look at the zebras there. Um, and you notice that on the product as well. It's kind of a... it's almost... I wouldn't call it awkward, but this, this fillet along the side here, this blend, um, is quite pointed compared to the rest of the handle. But I guess once you get the interface on the top, you don't really notice it. And other things that I found, so I've modelled to a split line. So this red line between the two parts, the top and bottom housings, were actually the top. These are actually, there's the bottom housing and then there's these two separate white parts. Um... And running a straight edge and rolling it across here, you don't really notice any uh, draft interruptions. So I think what they've done, and what I did, was I added a, a control surface, which is drafted. Because this, uh, the PlayStation, don't know if you know, we're going to Photoshop. Uh, on the lower housing, this whole area here has got quite a fine texture made out of uh, the D-pad triangle, square, cross and circles and then that sort of runs out to nothing along here um, and because this is tangent across here I figured what they've done is this main part here is moulded to a like a to a two degree draft there and then these top parts here they're actually they aren't uh, molded straight up and down they're molded like on us they're rotated slightly in the mold which means they get um two degrees draft here on the tool but when that's all assembled this is all tangent i hope that makes sense yeah so these top two side things they're molded um rotated on the tool so that's how they get this nice smooth transition across the part line as well as getting this texture going to i'm assuming that's like two degrees uh draft here so yeah anyway okay so as i said so yeah this part here is drafted off on an angle 
not that I'm going to get too worried with uh, draft angles and all that, but I wanted to get a to uh, model something that reflects the actual product in your hand. You kind of have to analyse it and see how they've they've manufactured it. So that's why I put that draft ribbon along there, and these surfaces are then drafted to that. So these are a tangent across, but they're not curvature continuous. Okay. Right, I might just roll through this super quickly, uh, considering this is only like a, I don't know, maybe just over a third of the way through the modelling process, I'm, I'm guessing. So quite a lot to go. I've probably invested 20, oh no, more than that, 35 hours so far. I know that sounds like a lot, but yeah, it's not an easy thing to model. Okay, so I started by modelling the top panel at the front, and then started working up some of the part lines. So 3D sketch. Really want to identify those part lines early on. And then start blocking in the surfaces. So quite a lot of um, sections in two directions uh, to control these surfaces. To stop getting any um, wrinkles in the boundary surfaces. Okay, and as I said earlier, there's this sort of tightening of the curvature up the front here. So I decided after, this is version 22, so I've had several attempts at different things. So I tried modelling this as one sort of big soft surface across here, but it wasn't working. So I decided then to build it as two separate surfaces, or two separate um, with a crease, and then blend in between the two. So as you can see there, we've got two, um, three surfaces with a crease running through, and the crease runs out by the time it gets to the surface here. And then I go back in and trim out a section like that. And then create our tighter blend to finish that off. And if you look where the D-pad is, so you see what I mean? Really quite flat and then curves all of a sudden. Whereas down the handle further, it's got a, a uh, more consistent curvature. Okay, then the handle underside. So again, just building up some um, the main sections. I identified one of the part lines early on that looked planar. So have you ever seen something when you're modeling a product uh, and you can identify it as being planar, then it's a really good idea to try and keep it planar. So I thought this curve here from an angle, once I finally found the plane, that sort of sits on a plane. And um, so that's a really good way of controlling form. So you don't end up with sort of wiggly, weird 3D curves. Okay, and like earlier, lots of sections to control. I've hidden lots of them. But yeah, there's quite a lot on there. As you can see, that surface there, it's got four sections in one direction and one, two, three, four, five in the second direction. Just to control the form, because otherwise SolidWorks doesn't know how to uh, control the surface. So you've got to tell it what to do. Okay, then we went on to the centre underside. So this big surface across here, which at first first looked like it was a like a consistent section with a sweep, as it turns out, it's not. It's much more complicated than that. It actually deforms. I'll just hide the. It actually deforms, as you can see. So at the top it's curving one way, at the bottom it's curving the other way. So it's quite tricky. And I decided to model this one full width. So I didn't end up with any weird curvature across the middle. Okay, now we're starting to get into the tricky stuff is the finger blend area. I've got a, so I've got this rear part line, which is a pretty iconic part of the controller. So I've, I've defined that early on, that green line. And then started adding some pre-relief into the surface here by adding this surface here. So that lifts up. So I'm going to trim this whole area out, but just adding some pre-relief there so the surface is starting to turn. Okay, so this is the front for your forefinger, the hook at the front of the product. Uh, again, this took quite a little bit of tweaking just to uh, figure out what to do. And because this uh, has a, a section it changes on the end here, I've decided to build it and then extend it. So I overbuilt it and then we'll trim it back. Okay, so this is uh, the first of the tricky blends coming up now, which is called the, I've called it the handle to underside blend. 
which is that one there. So as you can see what I've done with the pre-relief here, like starting to rotate the surface early, so with this one comes in, it doesn't have an abrupt um, change, and also means I don't have to bring this blend all the way out here, because I didn't want it affecting the surface up here. So that worked fairly well. Okay, next up is the front button surround. So this was quite a lot of work figuring out how to build the area that surrounds the front button, front buttons. Because there's a wall here, this wall here, if you look from the side, the outside edge of this wall is on a planar face, like from left to right, and I figure that's because the button's at the front, the bottom trigger, it's on a pivot, so that pivot, um, the axis for that is along the X of the product, so they need to have a planar face there, just so it'll, um, so the, the gap between the button end, when it rotates, it closes up evenly. So yeah, I had a few different goes how to figure this out, so big blend here going in, so buttons in here, the button also has a variable gap on it, so when I get to modelling the button, that will be some more fun, modelling this big surface in the middle here, this one's going to get trimmed back. And this is one of the situations where I've had to add a pre-fillet. So that's a 0.5 face fillet in here. Curvature continuous and because uh, it's a face fillet you can select to have it untrimmed so it doesn't actually affect your geometry. Just throws the fillet in there which is great because then I can use that and I can patch that into the model when I need to. Okay, so I need that fillet there to uh, run trims off. I'll show you. Okay, so there's one. I've trimmed the surface back. And you can see that has to run on to the 0.5 fillet. Because this 0.5 fillet's consistent along here, I need to put it in first before the blend. I can't have this big blend going down to a point and then try and put the fillet in afterwards. It's just going to end up being messy. Okay, and then there's the bottom trim as well. So now we've got to put on a big blend here. And it's kind of fussy because it's going from such a tight fillet here to such an open face up here. Okay, so there's that blend and I'm having some ongoing issues there. It's got three intermediate like curvature continuous G2 control profiles in there, but just for whatever reason, SolidWorks is, uh, as you can see along here, this boundary, having some issues. So the next step, which I don't really want to have to do, is to put a put another, like an intermediate profile going in the other direction. But that means I'll have to pick up tangency off this face, off this face, so I'll have to put on a face curve or something, and then put a, a style spline in that passes through all of those um, sections running in the other direction. Okay, and then I'm just starting on the handle ends, which are on these ends here, so I've got to extend these out, and that that probably take a bit of time as well, because it looks like three-sided surfaces going on there, um, so I'll have to trim things back to use four-sided surfaces. Okay, and a mirror and nut, just for the sakes of uh, this video. It's another quick zebra, all looking pretty good. Um, these corners here, I'm going to start working downwards because the black faces on this product are offset downwards, um, off the white faces. So I need to actually create like ruled surfaces or little edges uh, off these white surfaces to dictate the starting faces for the black surfaces. So yeah, it's going to be quite a bit of fun. And then this area here is going to be a real challenge. I'll just bring it up around the uh, the sticks here, like all this blending here, there's quite a lot going on. Like the surface comes and bellies out and comes in. Um, yeah, so it should be entertaining. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here. So I'll post something maybe in a few weeks. I've got some work coming up, so I probably won't have a lot of time to work on this. I'm not going to post this model online yet unless anybody's super desperate for it because the, the tree's a bit of a mess. 
I haven't named everything. Um, there's probably a few ghost features in there that aren't needed. Yeah, so I'll we'll leave it there. Okay, that's the PS5 controller, part one. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.